Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Jaeger262 with another Armored Warfare news update. And this one is very exciting, but I'll get into that right after we take a quick look at the new vehicle. This is a Tier 7 Premium Armored Fighting Vehicle, or AFV, that's coming into the game as part of a new contract reward. It is going to be a Tier 7 AFV, which means it will have a 30mm auto cannon. It's going to get ATGMs balanced, which are really powerful. Hopefully they'll remain as powerful as they say they will. And thanks to, I believe, update 0.30? I can't remember. It's the most recent one. It will be able to deploy infantry, like all other AFVs in the game can do now. So again, you can read this article at your own leisure. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But we're just going to get into the actual stats of how it's being preliminarily balanced now, but that is subject to change as always. And just take a quick look at the model. And of course, the history of the vehicle, its development and uses in the ground defense force, all that good stuff. But what makes this so special? is not only will it be incredibly mobile, it does get over 460 meters of view range because it gets a recon package. Not all AFVs do, so it's balanced to be a light recon vehicle. But thanks to its high mobility that comes with that and the ability to play troops, it is quite aggressive, at least on paper. Now, oh, I'm sorry, a 35 millimeter autocannon, not 30. It will have 220 rounds per minute as a fire rate and gets a 30 round, 34 round magazine, which means you will have to reload it. I believe when we did the K21 news video, which I just did, you had the option between a belt fed continuous fire and reloading. This one doesn't get that option. It does get nine degrees of gun depression and plus 60 elevation. So there's a lot of AFEs in the game, especially any, actually all of the SPG AA platforms can do that. That will help you, I guess, shoot down helicopters in co-op missions or in the campaign story mode. Don't really know how useful that's going to be here, but it does get plus 60 degrees elevation, which is amazing. Now, the real selling point of this vehicle is for its tier, I don't think there's another AFV that can match this one in terms of sheer firepower with ATGMs. It gets the Jayu Mat, which is a Japanese ATGM, which offers 800 millimeters of penetration and can be fired three seconds between each other. So you can't continuously fire them or fire two at the same time, like with a tank destroyer, but three seconds is not a lot for a delay. And it will only take 16 seconds to reload. Now that sounds like a long time, but with the 35 millimeter Auto cannon, which offers 200 millimeters of penetration using the armor piercing, fin stabilized, discarding Sabo rounds. This thing's incredibly powerful. Imagine the Scorpion, which is the light tank. I'm forgetting what they called the actual AFE that's at tier 6. It might be the Scimitar. I'm not sure, but the Scorpion light tank is at tier 2. There's an AFV version of that using a 40 millimeter cannon, which has great penetration values at tier three. But what they did is they strapped two tow missiles to it and put it at tier six. And it is incredibly powerful. That is essentially what you're looking at here. 16 second reload is very fast. It's auto cannon has high penetration values and it's ATGMs have 800 millimeters of penetration, which is crazy. It does have a 30% camo factor as base. You can always increase that with crew stats and with skins or camouflages. Um, any skin in the game, whether it's an actual camouflage or like a brightly colored golden red motif, like on some of the event skins, do actually provide the camo buff, even though they're just cosmetics. So don't shrug off skins. If you have them, you can use them and buff that 30%, but already that's pretty great. And it's a low profile vehicle, as you can see here. So essentially, 
what we're getting with the Type 89 is a Tier 7 AFE that really operates like an insanely powerful Tier 6 tank destroyer. Almost like you're mixing the C1, the C13 at Tier 6, which is a tank destroyer, and the fire power setup of a Terminator, or, well, they changed the name, so it is just Terminator 1 and Terminator 2 at Tiers 8 and 9. It's going to be an incredibly hard-hitting vehicle, and I'm really excited to see it in the game. Now, what makes this news episode even more special than the past three is for the pictures you see here of the actual model itself in-game and the opening part of the article, which I didn't read, but essentially, because it's a contract mission for contracts, they go up next to both battle passes and seasons, and you complete daily missions every day, you get one or two points for a total of anywhere between four to six hundred points over the course of the entire season to collect a premium vehicle. Now, they have decided that they're not going to change the mechanics at all, that they don't believe they're too hard to grind or they take too much time, that you should be able to grind out three to six hundred points in a season's worth of time. Now, if a battle pass comes out alongside that season, the missions don't often add up and you're going to have to choose between one or the other and it is a lot of work, especially when I think the max you can get is six missions a day. It's hard. I mean, that's almost a hundred days of work, depending on... Now, it's not just one point per. The harder missions, which can only be completed in global operations or random battles, can yield up to 25 points. But still, a lot of players have complained, and there's been some controversy between how that system works and how it works with other premium vehicle missions in the game. Unfortunately, they will not be changing any mechanics for that. But why is that important for this? Is by addressing that, and these pictures here, they are confirming that there is going to be a new season for the launch of 0.31, which we didn't need confirming. We kind of already assumed that. But we're getting a Japanese vehicle there, and with the update of this new tech tree, it highly suggests that there's going to be a South Pacific-oriented season. And why do I say that? Because these garage pictures here are from the new update 0.31 garage. As you can see, the buildings in the background here and the foliage and just how things are laid out, this looks like a Japanese garage. Now, it could be anywhere in the South Pacific. This could even be a Korean style garage. My only point there is that they showed us it with a Japanese vehicle. Japanese vehicles is how they open this. It looks like it's Japan, new season. We might be getting a lot more South Pacific content in Armored Warfare than previously thought. I am very excited to see that. And again, the Type 89 here is decked out in that ground defense force blue-green that the Type 16 was, so that is going to be a new base color in the game, and it is going to be used for these vehicles, almost certainly. So that is the really cool part. Not only is this an amazing vehicle, but we know that there is going to be some sort, maybe not a battle pass entirely, but at the very least, a new season surrounding Japan and the South Pacific. So that is really cool. I'm really excited for this, and I will keep you guys updated with any news that comes out in the future about this. This might be, for me, my favorite update since the announcement of the French slash Italian tech tree last year. And one other thing that makes this even more exciting is, unlike that one where we had to wait almost six months from getting the news to have five vehicles, and we had to wait another six months or an entire year after announcement, before getting the rest of the tech tree, which that could still happen here, but again, the tech tree starting at tier seven, so you should be able to get all of it on launch, is they've set out the date for launch as the second half of February. So that is only about three weeks away at the most. So you're looking at a bunch of new Japanese vehicles, a new season, a lot of good stuff coming in only three weeks. 
So please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section below if you're excited for these vehicles, what Japanese or other South Pacific vehicles you want to see in the game. And please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you can get notified anytime I post a new news video or when I start doing reviews of these vehicles in game. It goes a long way to showing me that you guys watch this. It really helps support the channel, helps me keep making this content. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.